Hey everybody, welcome back to Letterman Row. I am Austin Ward. You know that guy. He needs no introduction, but it's Beanie Wells. You know we're talking about Ohio State running backs. Beanie's in the house. And, uh, Trey Sermon, Beanie, uh, kind of been waiting for this for a while, and then at Michigan State, here's that explosion. Looks comfortable, confident, made some things happen. Yeah, I was excited. You know, he's a guy that we were all excited about. You know, we heard he was transferring in from Oklahoma, which we know is a good program. And when you know you're getting a player that was recruited by a university like that, you expect him to come in and have a big impact. And uh, certainly last week uh, he had an opportunity to make an impact, and he did well when he got his opportunities. So, you know, for a running back, and we spent a lot of time talking about Master Teague and the Achilles. You know, Trey Sermon had a knee injury last year. He was transferring into – a new team, he's playing a new system, didn't have spring ball, a normal training camp. I think maybe we just – it's possible that maybe for myself that I just expected too much too soon. I think that's probably the case for a lot of us. I think we were all wanting to see him just take the reins uh, out the gate for Ohio State and be the number one guy. But it takes a little bit of time. And this was a unique year with COVID. So uh, I'm glad now we're seeing him kind of, you know, get in this groove. And hopefully this is a continuation in which we'll see the rest of the way. Yeah, unique year with COVID. That's an understatement. Um, the other part here, Beanie, is that I, you and I have had this conversation so many times. I know where you stand, uh, and I agree with you about giving one guy and going with all the carries. Is it possible that maybe Ohio State has found something in the last couple of weeks where it, it tried out Teague and, and Sermon early, and then it decided to go with the hot hand from there? Is, is it possible that they might have found a compromise that you can live with? I think so, especially with this year being the way that it is. I, we don't have the tradition of what 12, 13 games in which we would have in a normal season. And I, so I think now you can kind of figure out, okay, let's ride the hot hand in each particular game and what's going to work best for that uh, specific defense. All right, no question that was Trey Sermon for the Buckeyes at Michigan State. He's got another chance to run the football on Saturday with a Big Ten title on the line. Beanie's going to show us exactly what is driving that success right now. Let's roll the tape. All right, Beanie, so you look at this. He only still finished in this game, Trey Sermon, with 10 carries, but he certainly made the most of it, and he was just – he was really running hard from start to finish. You could tell he was ready to, to really make an impact. Certainly. He was running behind his pads, and he ran with a purpose, man. This is one of those runs right here that exemplifies him running with a purpose and him reading the blocks exceptionally well and then allowing his athletic ability to be able to take over. I mean, he can be a slasher and a home run hitter, and right here, you see a glimpse. I know it's only a five-yard run, but you certainly see a glimpse right there of that slashing ability. Yeah, showing some toughness. And I think, too, we shouldn't forget that there were three starting offensive linemen missing in this game. So that only added to the, the difficulty here. And that's why runs some like, like this one here, you know, stand out so much. It was the extra effort. Certainly. It's even more impressive when you got a guy that uh, can go and when it's blocked for maybe two or three, get you those extra yards, like I always talk about. And here you got guys that are out and him still making big plays. Here he makes a guy miss, gets to the second level, doesn't let the arm tackles bring him down. That's something that's critical if you're going to be a very good running back. You can't get stopped by arm tackles. You have to finish runs, and here certainly he does a good job finishing. That's, this was the run, and I, I couldn't believe that he didn't score, Beanie, but this was the run where I was like, okay, that's the Trey Sermon that I was expecting. This is the one that you and I had talked about in the offseason, why he could be so effective in that backfield alongside Justin Fields. Certainly. He's a slasher. He's a, a dynamic guy. And I think the more carries, the more opportunity he has, uh, the better off he'd be. It's just unfortunate right now we're in a situation with a shortened season to where he can't get fully comfortable and grasp the offense and get the gelling down with the offensive line. This looks like one of those jukes that they might have just motion captured this one and just put it straight into Madden. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't 100%. look real. <laughs> Finish that with a little stiff arm as well. And then all he'll kick in 12 four is not getting in the end zone. He would do that a little bit later. This next one here, this is an example of what you talked about where, you know, not every run is going to have to go the distance. Sometimes you're getting that block for two or three and turning it into five. Yeah. I mean, you want to see running backs get behind their pads and not just try to create the big play and hit the home run all the time. And here you see Trey Sermon understands the circumstances knows that, you know what, there's nothing there for me to bounce outside. Let me get behind my shoulder pads and go get those tough yards. I love that out of a runner. Yeah, that was something that, you know, Ryan Day was really harping when they did get on the field and start practicing in September. That's what he had to do. But this mm -hmm. is that home run ability. I know this is the one that had you jumping out of your seat. Oh, 1,000%. You know, <laughs> him, you know, reading the blocks, making a guy miss, and just taking off going the distance. Uh, that's something that we all anticipated seeing a lot more of. 
And hopefully, like I keep saying, we can see that continuing on in the Big Ten Championship and, and certainly in that college football playoff if we're fortunate enough to get there. What's the mindset for a guy when you know, all right, you've, this is blocked up well, it's read correctly, he's got the bounce back lane here, and now you're one-on-one. -on -one. What's the mentality of running back when he gets in this situation right here? Oh, i got to make this guy miss. There's absolutely no reason why, as a running back, I'm not making a defensive back miss, whether that's running over him or juking him. Somehow or another, i got to get past this guy. And then finished off here with that. Round. How about the quarterback <laughs> running down to help him out? <laughs> oh, man, you love that extra effort out of a QB. You know, wanting to just get his nose dirty a little bit there. <laughs> and he almost beats him to the end zone on the way. Beanie, Trey Sermon, he's rolling. The Buckeyes are rolling, too. They're heading to Indianapolis on Saturday to play Northwestern, getting the college football playoff. I know you're excited to see what Trey Sermon and Master T can do in a game that you know you win championships with a running game. Absolutely. Uh, I can't wait for it. Um, Northwestern is a good football team. Um, I'm anxious to see how we fare. All right, Beanie, I'll let you go. We know we've got the podcast coming up this week with Beanie and Cardale. Appreciate your insights, as always, on Letterman Row with Buck IQ. For Beanie, I'm Austin Ward. We'll see you next time.